I wanted to get PO online for the Facebook Live community and all other communities who are going to be able to engage with this content in order for them to get some massive value from PO in terms of his wealth of knowledge and experience in the property market. Now, most of you who know of me know that I host the Canary Wolf Property Investors Network meeting. And for the last two months, PO has shared massive value through means of um, auction updates, monthly auction updates. I still remember now, two months ago, the um, auction update that you shared, Pio, where you spoke about the best times to actually buy in the auction and the best times to actually sell in the auction. And I think that's going to stay with me for a very, very long time. It's very rare that we see people just share massive value and key insights. So to get us... It's funny you saying that. It's funny. So, so, so I just uh, chip in a bit. Uh, it's funny you saying that because I went to Regent's Park Pin a, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, there was this gentleman who came to Canada Wharf and he was speaking to Jay Howard, who I'm writing a book with. Wow. And he's saying to him, oh, the best months to sell the property is this one. The best month to buy is that one. And then I joined the conversation. And then he was like, oh, this guy told me what, this, what that is. And, and it was so funny to, to hear. So I, 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 I'm amazed that this is, is you know, stuck with people so, uh, so much. So. It, it yes. does stick with people. And, and this is one of the powerful things about creating value for people. You never know what people take away and find valuable. You put together a presentation, you say, you know what, this is all valuable. But usually there's one key thing that sticks with people. And I know two months ago when you did that auction update, that really stuck with me. I saw the buzz in the room when you were sharing that these are the key months in auctions to buy. And this is the reason why. Not just these are the months, but this is actually the reason. So amazing. All right, so let's get stuck right in. My first question for you, Pio, is can you please provide those people that are watching, anyone who's going to engage with this, some insight into, you know, a short bio or information about who you are? Um, yeah, great. So my name is Pio Drusnek. I'm a director of Synergy Property Partners, and I help people buy and sell properties in auctions. I'm an investor myself. And actually, at the moment, I'm in a property in an HMO that uh, I, I got with a JV partner. And I'm just a bit casual today because I'm making sure the guys who are upgrading the central heating are doing the good work. Excellent. So, uh, and and uh, so I'm an active investor and I help people buy and sell properties in auctions. And auctions is my main kind of area of, of, of expertise. And... Uh, uh, yes, that's that's about it. And I'm writing a book at the moment about property auctions. It's called yep. Before the Hammer Falls. Before and I'm writing this. Uh, yeah, I'm writing this with Jay Howard from Auction House London, who yep. I work with quite closely on a lot of things. And uh, we are writing this book from like a dual perspective of an insider mm -hmm. and an outsider. Excellent. Excellent. I think that's usually the best material that I've ever come across. I remember reading a book years ago. This must have been 2004, 2005, called The One Minute Millionaire. And it was a two-sided book where one side is a story about the principles and the other side is actually just the principles. So I think what you and Jay are doing is absolutely fantastic, writing it from the investor perspective, the person who sits in the chair buying the auction properties, and also from an auction perspective, the person who lets the hammer fall. So those of you who are watching this, you know, Piotr just shared, Before the Hammer Falls, that's the book he's writing with Jay. You know, make sure you get in touch and connect in order if, you, if that's something of interest to you. Okay, so another question I've got, and those of you who's watching, feel free. Hello, Debbie. Feel free, those of you who are watching, to send in questions. If you have questions about auction properties, investing, full stop, any questions you have, feel free to send them in. All right, so I'm going to jump right in, uh, deep dive into the questions I've got for this interview. The first question I want to write, um, I want to ask you is, how did you get into property and what was your reason why initially? Um, great. So I got into properties quite accidentally, I would say. Uh, I studied economics and finance and after, uh, at Aberdeen University. And after that, I wanted to come to London and find a job in a small yep. company. Um, to something relating to uh, my degree uh, and before coming to London I went on a silent meditation retreat and 10 day silent meditation retreat and over there I accidentally met someone with a property company and uh, he actually offered me a job we wow. had a brief chat before the meditation started and, and yeah we connected and he offered me a job after the 
uh, after I came to London. So that's how I got into properties. And I started working as a property sourcer for um, uh, basically most Indian investors and uh, who were looking to purchase in Paddington, Maida Vale and this kind of areas. And wow. that's how I started really. Um, so it was working for a company and uh, I guess I, I realized, you know, how much it's possible in properties and how it's sort of like lucrative it could be if, uh, you know, if you do things right. Excellent. Um, and then uh, after a couple of years, I set up my own business and now people so buy properties uh, and I joined the mastermind program. And then from the mastermind program, it all kind of snowballed. Yeah, so yeah. That's, Amazing, that's, amazing. That's, that's how I got into properties. And the reason why is uh, once uh, that was my job. So I had to make money to pay the bills. Uh, and uh, it kind of evolved into creating a long term wealth uh, wow. for uh, my future family. And uh, generally, like, um, you know, I see I, I'm Polish. I'm usually like Polish people are quite hardworking. And I like to see the returns on my hard work and, and yeah. properties is a place where, uh, you know, that's, that's there really. Yeah. And I, I think that's actually a really key point. I think a lot of people who want to get into property don't actually realize how rewarding property can actually be. You know, one of the things that really always kind of charges me up is when I see those people who say, I really love the process of taking a derelict house to a renovated house. Now that's that's not really my big thing in property, but I really love seeing people who, who say that because it's true, you know, it's so rewarding. If you have a, a six month, three month, um, 18 month development project or refurbishment project and you see a property in one state and after a period of time it's in another state, that can be very, very rewarding. So coming from a background as a teacher previously, I totally understand that seeing development and progress in a short period of time. All right, so that's absolutely fantastic. You got into property by accident. You started in the job. From starting in the job, you started to see the possibilities, quite similar to myself when I was an estate agent a long time ago. Then from seeing the possibilities, you transitioned into Simon Zucci's mastermind program. And from the mastermind program, things snowballed. Now, one of the things Piotr did not mention there, which I think is very, very vital, is Piotr was actually one of the top five performers in his mastermind year. So when he did his 12-month process with Simon Zucci, on the Simon Zucci Property Mastermind Program, Pio and his business partner at the time actually became one of the top five performers. And it was actually the video that Simon um, allows all of the top five performers to do in terms of a 25 minute presentation each after they finished their year that I actually watched where I was first exposed to Pio. And after watching that video, I said, you know what, I'd really like to connect with this guy. And, you know, I don't believe in coincidence, but it was less than a week, I think I actually met Pio in one of the networking events, we started speaking. This must have been late 2015 or 2016. And from speaking, you know, most people who, who know me don't know this, but I always tell Peter about this. Peter was one of the most instrumental people in me actually deciding to go and do the Property Mastermind course myself. And the reason why is I said to Peter, I'm thinking of doing this course. I'm sure I'm gonna do it at some point. And Peter basically said to me this, he said, Samuel, if you've got a decision between doing it in October coming up or doing it in April next year, what's going to be the difference instead of just doing it now? Get it done now, no excuses. And that is Piot's kind of way of living. Me and Piot have since done business together. We've looked at deals together. And that's always kind of his, his thought process and mindset. And that's one of the reasons I really like working with Piot because he's so straightforward. Let's get it done. Let's find a solution and let's get it done. And it's great to be around solution-oriented people. So my question is this, at this point, what are your actual desires in property? So right now, you know, you said from the mastermind program, things have snowboard. You know, I've been in auction rooms with you. I know what you're doing out there. You know, firstly, firstly, tell people a little bit more about what you do in the auction room or for investors, with investors. What, what do you do actually? Let, let people get the details so they can connect with you if they're interested in that. Yeah, great. So I, I kind of that two or three type of things that I do in the auction room on the actual auction day. Um, so one thing is sometimes I help people buy properties. So we go through the catalog. I usually go through the catalog and I just like it's like uh, going through a sweet shop and then looking at all the all the stuff that's available and then trying to pick up the stuff that it, it can make money. 
and then find a person for whom this will be an opportunity. Um, and then I, I do due diligence for that, uh, for, those, for those deals. I bring them to investors and then we try to purchase them in the auction. So that wow. could be one activity that uh, I do for clients. Another activity I do for clients is people approach me if they want to sell property quickly. They mm -hmm. um, might struggle selling it with an agent. It might be quite unique property. It might be derelict. It might be like whatever reason. They need to sell it quickly and they want to do it for an auction. So uh, quite often people come to me uh, in order to help them so choose the right auction house, uh, take the whole uh, basically transaction off their hands and basically yeah. sell it in the auction quite often. That's what people like me to do. They just are like, this is the address. And this is my solicitor. Like you handle it. And I don't have anything to do with it. Hands Let off. me know when it's sold. And uh, so that's, that's what I do for people. And on the auction day, I could be buying a property. I could be selling a property. And then at the same time, I've, I'm running those auction experience days where I take a small group of up to four investors through uh, sort of the auction process. So uh, I give them a bit of homework before the, the auction. They have to do the homework. And once they come in, uh, we like spend about four hours together going through all the sort of lots that we're interested in and wow. going through the details of what they have to do in order to bid. Yeah. And uh, generally just, it, it's an auction experience day. So it's like a dry run for when uh, they would be buying a property without actually spending any money on wow. buying the property. It's, wow. uh, um, so it's usually the auction days are quite active for me. Wow. Let me, let me ask you this, Pio. Why do you do that? Now, I've got a good understand. I think I understand why you do that. But just for those viewing, why do you take a client? So, all right, let me, let me rewind. You're already going through the auction catalog. Like you said, it's like a sweet shop got, looking at all the goodies. You're already doing that. That's part of your business. You're already identifying properties that are great opportunities in the auction. You're already doing the due diligence. All of this is part of your business. But then when you get an investor who's interested in you potentially buying on their behalf or selling for them, why do you do the four hour go through the dry run? What is, what's, what's, what's the thought process behind that? Well, uh, for me, like, um, you know, I run some uh, auction courses and I run some like auction trainings. And, but what I find is uh, really like the most beneficial thing is when people actually do it. And why yeah. I do it is because auctions, like after you do 10 or 20 of them, they can be quite boring. Yes. I mean, I, there's like, I know what I'm going to do. There's three or four lots that I might be interested in. But come on, the auction takes four hours. So I've got plenty yeah. of time that... I usually spend chatting with people anyway, chatting with As investors. I've seen. Like, uh, so I, I do it anyway. So I thought, let me just uh, put it together into like a, um, a, a, a thing people can book on and uh, yeah. they can benefit from, uh, you know, learning how to, um, how to approach auctions, you know, because th there's a lot of people who just take a chance at the auction. And there was like, even last week at the, one of the WhatsApp groups, there was this, a guy who posted a message saying that he exchanged on the property in the auction and he's asking, what do I do now? And wow. we're all like, you exchange on the property. It's a bit late to ask what you do now. You're it's giving like, away 10% and you have no idea what you're doing next. And you've got 28 days to complete. Well, fortunately, it was a different type of auction. So uh, he, he kind of managed to get away f with, with things. But okay. it's still a risky thing, uh, yes. you know, to approach auctions without actually knowing what to do and how to do things. Yeah. So that's why I'm running this auction experience day. And out of the auction experience day, uh, people may choose to, like, work with me further, like, or, like... Um, um, ask me to help sell the property or like there's all sorts of connections that can be made out of that uh, and generally it's just a more exciting day excellent excellent that sounds fantastic what for those of you who are just tuning in or those of you who have been watching what i want you to just if you're live i want you to just type in the comments watch now watch now watch now okay w-a-t-c-h and then now n-o-w all right if you're watching live I just want you to comment, watch now, so that we know who's on live. Now, the funniest thing, Pio, about the auction experience day, I remember the first time you started running those programs and you mentioned to me about the human psychology. And for me, that was like massive because, you know, I've got a brother who's a trader in the Forex market and he's always talking to me about human psychology. 
And I remember you saying to me, in the auction room, there's herd mentality. People sometimes are just bidding because other people are bidding. So one of the things you do on your experience day is really show people about the mentality they have to have, setting criteria. Talk, talk to me a little bit about that so people watching can have an understanding of the value. Thank you. We can see the watch nows. Let them keep coming. Watch now. Yeah, give me guys, an idea. Give, give me an class. idea, Peter, about you know what you're actually trying to give people in terms of a package through means of that training day that you do on the auction experience day. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so like we cover some of that. How people actually, uh, you know, how auction is structured, so that how it actually works because it works completely differently from a, a normal uh, process of buying or selling a property. And uh, you need to be able to understand those distinctions in order to like make the most out of the auction and not actually fall a victim of uh, of, of of that process because yes. it is quite a easy process to like enter into, but then the consequences are actually quite. Uh, uh, <laughs> thanks, Nadia. I'm glad you're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Nadia is actually one of my clients and I've been helping her sell uh, a, a couple of flats in, in Wales and also uh, she introduced a couple of clients to me so she is a great client of mine. Thank you Nadia. And uh, I, uh, so, so basically uh, what was I saying? I was about saying about how auctions rate. work. Yes, yeah, yeah how, how they work, because there is a kind of certain ways that auctions work, and then a certain ways of people respond to how auctions work. And then yes. from that, uh, you know, everything follows. So if you understand those principles, you will uh, be able to, like, you don't need my answers, you will be able to kind of work out your own answers to certain things, yeah. uh, just out of knowing the principles, basically. Yeah. So, um, and there's homework to be done uh, before the auction experience day. So I don't let people just kind of stroll in and, and, and do my auction experience day. They actually mm -hmm. uh, get some homework, they get you some spreadsheets, they're getting an auction yeah. catalog and they need yeah. to kind of complete certain things before coming to the day in order to yeah. take the most out of it. Because once you start going through an auction deal, like you will actually have real questions. There won't wow. be like some theoretical, uh, like uh, really uh, not important question. There will be things yeah. that actually uh, you're going to need in your real deal. So um, that's why I take people through. And, and then we also look at how, how the bidding process, what the process of bidding is. Like what do you need to do? What kind of documents you need? What, how do you need to prepare for this? Um, and we also play a little game. So we put the sort of sale prices of uh, of like first 10 lots and then we try to guess how much they're going to sell for uh, wow. and that is pretty much uh, the auction experience day four wow. hours we're having lunch and then we just uh, kind of finish the day at around 3 p.m sounds fantastic sounds fantastic so those of you who are who are sending in your messages thank you robbie thank you nadia thank you nicholas Thank you, Josh. We're getting all of the messages. Watch now. That's the that's what you've got to comment if you're watching live. Okay, so we've gone through quite a few questions already. Those of you who've missed out, feel free to go back um, and watch the interview again. But we've got a, a ton of other questions as well. And if you've got any questions whilst you're tuning in, feel free to write those questions as well. All your questions will be answered. Um, I've got a question here. What would you say was the most creative deal that you've been a part of. So since you've been engaging in this auction niche, what would you say is kind of like your most creative deal you've been a part of? Um, well, I've done a few creative deals in auctions and uh, I guess one of the most creative ones was uh, um, an underwriting deal on a property in Aberdeen. There was wow. an office block come up in the auction. It had a really good income, 120K per annum from Scottish police, really good wow. income. But the lease was expiring like within seven or eight months from the auction. So it was expiring pre, um, I mean, it was coming to an end. And Aberdeen, uh, in, with an oil crisis, wasn't doing that well. But the property was super cheap. It was guided at 500K. Wow, and what 420K we did with that, income. 500K, 420K income, yes. Wow. Uh, but that income was coming just for six months. So there was just like, it wasn't... Like it looked better on paper than in reality. in reality. But what we thought we could do with this, we could possibly um, like convert that property into residential or some other form of... It was right in the city centre in Aberdeen. And that was, it was wow. an attractive, beautiful, huge 
property. So it had all the sort of uh, things that you know you want in a property. Um, yeah. And then the only bad thing was the lease. And that property was purchased by someone else, uh, the, the seller actually, uh, for 2.2 million in 2007. So wow. it was being sold by like 7%. Less than a quarter of the value, yes. Yeah, so it seemed an amazing deal. And what we did on that is why it was creative, because we uh, submitted a pre-auction offer. And it wasn't just a normal purchase offer. It was actually a, an underwriting offer, which wow. means that we committed to purchase the property for 600K, but uh, that property was still offered in the auction. And if it sold for anything more than what we committed to, which was 600, yeah. we would split the profit above that 50-50. Wow. So um, actually uh, that property sold for 675K. So that was wow. about 37K profit. Uh, literally in six weeks without actually owning the property uh, or without, uh, you know, like we had to put 10% deposit, which we get got back. So all we did is we took a risk that we have to buy this room for 600K and yeah. we wanted to buy that property anyway. So, that is fantastic. That is fantastic. Yeah, so, sorry, guys. So let me, just, let me okay. just stop you there because I need to let someone in. So That's I'll keep cool. talking. The joys of but... Facebook Live. Yes. Right, keep talking. That's not when you're ready for The joys of Facebook Live. We're absolutely live, guys. Piot's in one of his HMOs, as he explained earlier, and he's got to let some people in for some work. So this is the joy of Facebook Live. You see it all, guys. You see it all. Um, there's no, no stone unturned. Okay, so, so basically with this deal, you said it was one of your most creative deals because of the fact it was an auction underwriting and I understand the auction underwrite process. I've actually, I don't know if it's in there. I think it is in there. I've actually done, this is one of the reasons I wanted to do this today is because I've actually released a new product called 30 Ways in 30 Days. Now this particular it's product- upside down. Is it upside down? Yes. Oh, it's backwards. It's backwards because of the, because oh, of the camera. Scene. Apologies okay. to those of you, but this is called 30 Ways in 30 Days. It's an online product where basically it goes through 30 ways that I've found throughout my time in property to actually make money in property. And I think auction underwriting is in there. But I know that I'm not an auction expert, which is why I always connect with other people who know way more than me in the specific niches I get into. And this is the reason I needed to get Pio online in this interview today so other people can start to see the kind of value that's out there in terms of understanding how to invest in property. So this deal you spoke about, Pio, as your most creative deal, for me, I, I can already see how it sounds, how it is phenomenal. Primarily because of the fact that you're investing absolutely minimal money yourself. You're putting a 10% deposit down, which is 60K out of a 600K. You're writing a contract to say, I promise to buy it if it doesn't sell in the auction. But in the auction, if it goes above what I promised to buy it for, we'll split the profit. And because it sells for... 675 that 75k split down the middle you're actually given back your um the original deposit funds and you're given a you know just under 40k which you never even owned a property in order to generate and that is fantastic that is that is fantastic if you think about it let's talk about other line because everyone who knows me knows i'm a numbers guy you put 60k into a deal plus legal fees so call it 62 and you generate back out just under 40K. So that's close to a 50% return on investment. And I'm sure yeah. in terms of time frame, that didn't take 18 months. No, it, it took six weeks. And actually, like I did this deal <laughs> with, uh, with a joint venture partner. So um, they put in the money and we spent about... Um, we spent about seven thousand pounds on all our due diligence because wow. uh, if you're doing underwriting, you actually have to prepare to purchase the property. So we were doing yes. exactly the same things as we were doing as a buyer. To, uh, purchase the property. So we spent quite a bit of money on planning, uh, planning advice. We spent quite a bit of money on legal advice, wow. and uh, all that added. It came to about seven thousand pounds. So it's wow. so with, you, you, with you, right, you need to be ready to purchase the property so uh, it, it's not just a kind of an upside game it's yes. exactly it's, it's not not so much of a downside but you need to be comfortable buying the property 600k um, yes. and then making uh, money uh, you know the longer way so yes 
And I think that's one of the joys of when you really know what you're doing in property, the fact that you have to be comfortable with both the risk as well as the reward. And I think underwriting, that's, that's the real power in underwriting. You're really tying yourself into the risk if it goes wrong, but you're also locking yourself in for that reward. All right, so Joshua's yes. got and a we're question. We're going to cover a lot of that in, in our auction book. So myself and Jay are going to talk. Uh, there's going to be a whole chapter on underwriting and what the risk Excellent. is reward and everything. Excellent. So watch this space, guys. The book's coming with a whole chapter on property underwriting in the auction. So Joshua's got a question. I'll ask, I'll read that out before I go into some of the other questions I've got down. How did you raise finance to purchase your first residential property? Did you make severe cutbacks or was earned income enough? That is a great question for those of the, for those viewers or those people who are going to engage with this who are investing in property for the first time time how did you raise finance to purchase your first residential property did you make severe cutbacks or was earned income enough do you want to go first Pio, or should i go first um okay so i'll go first just to kind of uh, uh, make things clear so like i don't actually own a residential property i rent my property in london because i live in london if i wanted to own my property mm -hmm. i have to spend about 700k on this and instead, I just uh, yeah. I'm, I'm renting it. I am sharing it with uh, two other people, uh, and and I'm actually yeah. really happy with it. And then I own properties that are investment properties with joint venture partners that are producing income. So that's my way of actually uh, you know um, making income. Like I, I'm in a property. It's a business. Uh, I don't have to own the property uh, to actually um, yeah to, to make money. money from the property. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, like I got this, uh, I got a lot of inspiration from Grant Cardone, and I'm yeah. going to watch, uh, going to his, uh, uh, this, his, his business, 10x business bootcamp in two weeks' time. I think that is. Yes, we're gonna so both. Anyone's interested, connect with me, and uh, we're gonna. Uh, my seven J are going there, and uh, uh, basically, it's it, he, what Grant is saying. Grant is saying like. You don't want to own a residential property. I was actually sending that uh, video to you, right? Uh, yes, you did. So long ago. Yes, and he did. says basically, like when you are when you own the property, it's not actually an asset. You have to spend it's money. On you have to spend money on uh, like upkeep of this property, and uh, it's like you don't actually pay much less than than the rent. You actually might be even paying more. more. And you don't have that flexibility that you have with with, with rent. Uh, it's like you can move, you can rent anywhere, and someone else already paid lots of money for this property, especially in London. In London, people are happy with three, four percent returns. Like it's it's it's, it's actually <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> It's ridiculous. I think you're frozen, Pio. So hope yes, you're back. You're back. Someone called me, um, but uh, I'm saying it's better to own a property somewhere else where it makes like whatever seven, eight, ten percent, and uh, and and you pay the rent at sort of three percent kind of yield. So excellent. Even, so. Excellent. So Josh, Joshua, hopefully your questions are answered. Um, you asked the you question, how did you? Yeah, I'm going to give my answer as well. And it's funny because my answer is very similar, but let's go. So Joshua, you said, how did you raise finance to purchase your first residential property? And Pios just said to you, he doesn't actually own his residential property. He's actually renting it. And if you follow this thread, he was saying through an actual creative means. He then went on to say, did you make severe cuts, cutbacks? So I guess Pios' answer is no, he didn't have to. And all was earned income enough. And again, I guess no, the answer um, is the answer to that. Now, on my front, in terms of my property journey, how did I raise finance to purchase my first residential property? Now, you know, the answer, the principle is the same as Piot's, but the answer is completely different. So I learned creative strategies of how to invest in property. And through means of learning creative strategies, I ended up in a, in a predicament where property, my residential property that I currently own, I do own it, I actually ended up in a predicament where it was offered to me with such a big discount that that discount mitigated the deposit I would have to make. And I hope that makes sense. So I was able to get into a transaction where my discount negotiated on the property was much larger than the actual deposit I would have had to pay if I was buying the property. But as a result, I had to pay no deposit 
to purchase that property. The only thing I paid for was legal fees and at the time stamp duty because I bought this property a little bit before the recent stamp duty change last year or the year before where they basically said if you're buying for under 300k, you don't have to pay stamp duty as your first residential. So because I purchased with such a great discount, I obviously mitigated the deposit and therefore I didn't need earned income except what, you know, I, the legal fees was like 1,500 max. Um, the stamp duty was under less, less than 500 pounds. So that's how I, I got my first residential property, not from cutting back, not from anything else, just from being creative. So I want to encourage you because Piot's answer, although Piot doesn't own his own residential property, Piot's answer is exactly the same in terms of creativity. It's all about learning creative strategies that you can leverage in order to move yourself forward, whether it's on your residential front or in your business through means of your commercial front, okay? And I think what Piot shared as well is very, very paramount for those of you watching to understand. Robert Kiyosaki teaches the same thing. Uh, Piot's mentioned Grant Cardone. Both of us are gonna be at the 10X conference coming up in London in the O2. Um, and so is Jay. You know, um, I think Matty of Ventura is gonna be there. A few of us are gonna be there. But the key is all about being creative. You know, there's a difference between assets and liabilities. The moment you think your residential property is going to be an asset, you've got it wrong unless there is an element where it's making you or generating money for you. For me, I've got a substantial amount of equity in that property. So it's, it's given me something. But if it's not giving you anything, it's a liability. And therefore, you're better off investing your funds in assets. Now, thanks for the advice. Look forward to speaking soon. Thanks for the advice. Look forward to speaking soon. Excellent, excellent. Okay, those of you those of you who are tuning in, feel free to write watch now in the comments just so we know you're watching now. So, over the time you spent in property. Okay, yes, let's go for this question. So, over the time, again, and th this is a kind of good question coming off of what Joshua just asked about the changes that have taken place and how you've decided to not buy your own house, although you're controlling other properties with JV partners, etc., since you started in property PO till now, obviously you, you've developed in knowledge, you've got exposed to new information, you shared the ideas from Grant Cardone that we've shared with one another as well. I would say, has your reason why changed from being in a position where it was like, okay, I want to make an income, I want to pay my bills. Has your reason why changed over time? Um, so it, it hasn't really changed that much. What's changed is the way I do things. Yeah. Uh, like especially on mastermind like i learned so much and i also learned about one of the big things that i got from mastermind is uh, doing the, the the wealth dynamics test yes and the wealth dynamics is like kind of a personality profiling uh, and yeah. that's uh, that's um, like for business and from like working with teams and yeah. uh, it, it just gives you an idea of what you're really good at what you really what your flow a state is like where you actually perform at your best and yeah. so like i like i discovered that i'm a trader and actually when i read the description like it was really um really fitting and and it made me kind of look at what i'm doing and yeah. choose the kind of things that i'm really good at and not do the things that like are just taking me a lot of time and then not bringing me the results yeah uh, so you know i'm a trader so i help uh sort of focus on buying and selling properties helping people buy and sell properties and i kind of cut back as you know on um, sort of managing tenants and yeah. doing the kind of stuff that I, i'm not a, i'm not the best person in those things so yeah. i better pass it on to other people who are really good with tenants yeah. and i focus on the things that i'm good at so that's that's what changed over the years sort of as i as i as i did things Excellent. So that's powerful. And I think for those of you watching, those of you engaging with this, please take this as a lesson. What Pio said, the question was, has your reason why changed over time? And Pio said his reason why hasn't changed, but what has changed is how he does business. And I think that's very vital for a lot of people because what happens is we have this big reason why we start doing a particular strategy or approach and we don't want to change it because we think it's the only way to get to where we're going because it's generating income. And I remember I sat with my business strategist in July this year. And one of the things she said to me, she said, look, Samuel, if you're met, she said, what she said in simple terms, she said, Samuel, your accounts don't lie. She said, if you're making most of your revenue from this activity, then this is the activity you probably want to focus on. 
And the funniest thing is that's business, okay? And most people don't understand that as business. Most people think, oh, business is renovating houses because I renovate houses. But if the reality is you make the most of your reno revenue from actually trading property, then go and trade property. Or in Piot's case, as he shared, which is even more powerful, if you understand your values or your skill set is a particular style, then actually stay in your lane and you'll be actually much more productive. And this is one of the reasons why I love sharing value, love giving content. My background was from teaching, not because I, I couldn't find another job. It's because I wanted to teach. Mm -hmm. I wanted to give value. I wanted people to understand things they didn't understand prior because you had a great person explaining it to you. And that's why even in the property space, I'm adamant on getting great value and sharing it with the community. So yeah, if you're watching now... And and you've got the right energy for it because like you take <laughs> everything that I say, you just turn it into this amazing, amazing kind of stuff. And and you've got such a passion for it. And and that's why I'm saying about, you know, knowing what you're really good at and what you yeah. at, at flow because like this is where you are at your flow, right? And, yeah. and, and you do it brilliantly and like it, it leaves people actually you know, happy they engaged with you. So the same with, with, with me, like uh, when I do things that I'm good at, like it leaves people like happy that they worked with me. When yeah. I'm managing tenants, it doesn't make tenants happy that they worked with me. Like, <laughs> most of the time. Like, it leaves either me or them disempowered. And it's not yes. the point of the, the whole thing. It's the point is to, to actually be happy with what you're doing and provide yeah. value to other people and yeah. uh, you know, make money from it. So yeah. uh, that's the... Um, that's 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 why I learned throughout the years. So yeah, I've, good, good I, think, summary. I think that is fantastic, Pio. Like just even thinking about what you're saying, because as you shared that, what I get from you is you're not thinking about yourself. You're not being selfish in your business. You're actually thinking about your end user, your client. You're saying, okay, I used to have tenants, and when I was managing tenants, someone's disempowered. So I thought, let me do what I'm best at. Okay, now I trade property. Clients engage with me, investors engage with me, and they're actually happier, you know, and it's, it's the same thing, like, you know, thank you for all the nice compliments, like, those people who watch the stuff that I do and find it valuable, let me know, write value in the comments, because the more I understand that it's valuable, the more I will change my schedule in terms of all the stuff I'm, I'm doing you. and create more content, more value, etc. because I think the community needs it, I think... We live in a modern day and age where things are so accessible. I'm on my phone. You're on your phone. Probably 90% of the people watching this are on their phone. We can be anywhere in the world and engage with an interview of so much value where we're talking about property. We're talking about how to invest. We're talking about the auction room. You know, this is, this is 2018. This is a day and age where we can convey this information. I don't have to be in a stationary classroom with a stationary 30 children and they're the only people that can access this value. So this is one of the reasons I love sharing. So again, thank you, Pio. All right, so the question I'm gonna ask you now is about challenges because you know one of the things I dislike is being in those environments, You know, sometimes those places you go to where everyone's pumped, pumped, is motivation central, but there's no real value. So I'm gonna ask you this question about conflict and challenges. And that's what's the biggest challenge that you found in your property journey? Because I think, People need to learn about challenges. People need to understand that challenges um, are something we, we will face and we have to overcome. I remember just before you go, Pio, um, a mentor saying to me when I was around 19 years old, he said, Samuel, why take 70 years to learn what you can learn in seven hours reading the book of someone who took 70 years to be able to write that book? And that just, you know, when the mentor said that to me at 18, 19, that astounded me because it made me realize, hold on a minute, I can add 70 years to my life in terms of knowledge in an instant, in seven hours of time, just by reading books. Now we have audio books. We didn't, we didn't have audio books the way we have audio books now in 2004, 2005. So again, you know, we're in a fantastic day and age where knowledge can just be conveyed and transmitted so quickly. So in terms of challenging challenges, what's the biggest challenge that you face in your property journey? Um, okay, so the biggest challenge, I guess... Uh... Well, let me think. Like, I probably it's, it's the challenges like with tenants, and uh, that's the kind of challenges with some of the rent to rents that I had, where the where I had, uh, you know, properties were like we had some bed bugs in the property, and like we took the property on, and literally everyone moved in, like seven people moved in, and then within two weeks we had bed bugs, and we had to like wow. deal with the whole thing with like seven upset people. Uh, with uh, you know possible liability quite high and 
it's like we had to deal with so many things. That was a really stressful situation. But uh, like I am now an expert in bed bugs and <laughs> I can direct people to where should they where they should go, what they should they should do if they have bed bugs in one of the rental properties. So that 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 was a big challenge for for me. And I was right at the start of my of my sort of rent to rent journey, and it was like so challenging. Other challenging things were things like. Uh, basically tenants not paying and we had having to evict them and going yeah. through the whole process of serving notices and not receiving rent for like three, four, five months and then having to go to court, pay for the court, pay for the bailiffs, wait for the bailiffs and then having wow. the, the property vacant after like six months. So that wow. that's really challenging because it's something that doesn't make you money. It actually costs you a lot of money, costs you a lot yeah. of time. And it's like, if you're doing it for the first time, it's like so energy draining that, uh, you know, I don't wish anyone has uh, issues like that, but it's, it's things to be, that, are, that are very easily sort, like fixable, but they just take time and they take yeah. some special kind of, uh, I guess, people on your team to, to ensure that you're doing things correctly, you serve notices yeah. correctly, you're going to, uh, to court and doing the right thing. So, and uh, those were the kind of most challenging things. Uh, but I guess challenges are an everyday thing for, for properties. Okay. It's like uh, there's very few deals, uh, even in auctions, where there isn't a challenge. There is a challenge yeah. with every deal. And yeah. I guess in properties, you just need to kind of, uh, uh, you know, search for challenges that you want to handle and yeah. just keep handling them uh, rather yeah. than trying to avoid challenges because it's not possible. That's perfect. It's funny, Piot, because I've never, and this is this is just, I've never ever heard anybody convey challenges the way you did, just even at the beginning of your answer. And and for me, that is just massive value. What you said is the one of the biggest challenges was bed bugs, but now you're a bed bug expert. And I think a lot of people miss that point. They miss that the challenges they face. You know, someone told me it like this. A mentor told me it like this a number of years ago. The challenges you face qualify you for your next le for your next level. So it's like you saying, well, now that I've gone through the challenge of the bed bug issue, I know how to solve such an issue. And now, if somebody else goes through that issue, I can actually advise them. And it's the same with the auction because you're in, in the auction environment. You see the good, you see the bad, you see the ugly. Now, someone else who's brand new coming into that environment, you could say to them, well, this is how you should actually deal with it. You know, yesterday I had someone call me asking me about my sourcing activities and saying to me, look, they've got someone who's trying to do something. Can I help them? And it's all that whole process of the fact that you're a bit more experienced. You've got that knowledge. You've got that insight. Can you now pass it on? So becoming an expert through means of your challenge, I think that is phenomenal. I think that is phenomenal. And again, it, it connects with what you were sharing earlier about kind of staying in your lane. So, yes, other challenges that occurred were with tenants and you realized, hold on a minute, you know, I prefer to have these kind of challenges in terms of auction challenges rather than having the challenges I've had with tenants. Let me shift into a business model which allows me to face the challenges I want to face. So I think, again... Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, okay so, so Samia, just just so that uh, I'm uh, with, with clear, I've I've got only five minutes for for the rest of this uh, this this uh, Facebook. That's class. cool. So I've got some coaching calls that are coming up, and I need to still uh, get myself prepared for those. So that's perfect. Uh, that's sure. perfect. I've got two more questions. The first question I'm going to ask you is, what type of property deal would you say are your favorites? What's your favorite type of property deal? Like it's an auction deal. Like it has to be immediate exchange. Immediate exchange. Immediate exchange. Four weeks completion, and that's it. Uh, no messing around. Four weeks done deal. That's my that favorite deal. I think that is phenomenal to think that in thirty days you can go from not owning something to owning no, something. Someone is calling me, and they they. They, they, they don't stop calling you. They keep calling you. <laughs> That's okay. We still, we, we got They're your answer. The we, we got your, <laughs> it's so good. We got your answer. An auction deal, four week completion. You know, just it's, it's amazing knowing that in 30 days from not owning a property, you can own a property. All right. Last question from me. And then I'm going to ask you how you can share with the people watching, how they can connect with you. But what made that, but like what what is it about the auction deal specifically that make them your favorite um, so so 
They're calling okay. Piot again. Go I on. know. I know. This is. A, a, this is. A, I will have to take that call straight after I finish this. So my. Mm. Uh, what my auction is the, the most favorite place for me is like when I was doing property sourcing for other clients, sometimes it was just taking a lot of time, a long time to, for, to find the deal and then to get the deal through uh, conveyancing and then to exchange and completion. That's where I would be paid. So sometimes I had deals where uh, actually this one with Ed Fox who's coming to speak uh, at, at Canal One. They're calling Piot again. Go on. Go and, on. And, and I had I was doing that deal with Ed and, and Prosperity, and that was a two million pound deal. And we spent about 18 to 20 months on that deal. And wow. right where it was going to exchange, that was a two million pound deal. Right where it was going to exchange, like it fall apart. And then I wasn't I wasn't paid anything. And it was uh, prosperity paid their, their fees and whatever for uh, due diligence that they had to pay to third parties and stuff like that. So it's it's like with normal type of deals, it, it just takes a long time and there's no certainty of outcome. With auctions, yeah. there's that certainty of outcome. If you do like, or if even if there's that uncertainty, that uncertainty is for a really short period of time. Yeah. You do your due diligence, within two weeks, you know whether you bought the property or not. And yeah. you don't get that with a state agency deal. In two that's weeks, you sometimes you, that's what you wait for the other party's details, right? Yeah. That's the solicitor yeah. details. It's yeah. ridiculous how long it takes. And auctions are very streamlined. So if you're really serious and committed and you do your work, you can do things very quickly. Yeah. Someone's calling Pure again. But you're right. You can do things extremely quickly in the auction. And that makes yeah. the auction a great environment to know what's going to happen and answer all your questions in a short period of time. So, Pio, yeah. just lastly, before you've got to go, how can people connect with you? Those of those who are watching, those who will watch this in the future, those who are going to engage with this content, how can they connect with Pio Rusnik? Yes, yeah, so they can connect me, add me on Facebook, uh, join my auction group, which is Property Auction Success. And uh, or possibly also connect with me on LinkedIn. Piotr Rusnek, you've got my name there. I know it's difficult, but I'm sure you can find me. There isn't many of those uh, on LinkedIn. So, um, yeah, connect me Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, and join my Facebook group uh, with Jay Howard. It's Property Auction Success. Excellent. And for those of you who don't know, Piotr also has a YouTube channel, Auction Mastery TV. Uh, it's uh, Auction News TV. Auction News TV. Make sure you go head on to YouTube and get a watch of a few of his videos where there's massive value there as well. This is Samuel Ikenwin signing out. Peel, thank you ever so much. Right. Thanks, for this everyone. Hour Thanks Samuel.